topic we're going to be covering today is RFID and RFID chips and RFID products. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. Now, these chips um, are part of our life now. They are. They're here. Um, and they're being used exactly for what people were afraid they were going to be used for. To monitor and track. And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, people were also afraid that uh, they would be implanted or forced upon you. And they are. People were also afraid that you would be required to use them. Whether you liked it or not, you would have to have them in an all-high-tech electronic society. And you do. Yeah, this, this conspiracy is, is here. It's just not to the level where it's, it's terrifying. It's almost there. It's almost terrifying. Just not there exactly. Now, what do I mean by they're being forced on us so take a look at your uh, credit card go ahead look at your debit cards look at all of them you probably have a chip and if you don't you're probably gonna get one soon I uh, used to I go to the store all the time and uh, I buy buy something I need food I need um, hair product I need shirts I need I need whatever it is probably chew most of the time and I go and slide my card done I'd get out now I can't even do that. I slid my card the other day, and it said, Error, please insert card. And I looked down, and I was like, shit, I got one of those chips. I've always had one of those chips. Why does it want me to do this now? Well, Walmart has uh, always been a good friend of national security, and they've been really good at implementing RFID to help with their inventory. Um, I do that because, hey, maybe people are the inventory. I'm not sure. But now you have to actually go ahead and put your card in every time you go to Walmart. Let it do its thing. Collect its information. Bill you and then you take it out and that's it. So, yeah, they've been forced upon us. And guess what? Pretty soon you're not going to be able to use cash. You're going to have to continuously use these cards. And you're just going to have to deal with it because... You need these in order to survive, to buy, sell, trade, survive. You're going to need this. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, on the other hand, uh, think about how cool it's going to be when we start really diving into RFID technology. It's going to be so fantastic, guys. We could literally... Here, here's some ideas, okay? Because we have smartphones, smart watches, smart cars, smart homes, uh, smart TVs, smart lights, smart locks, smart thermostats. I mean, you kind of get the point. Everything is getting smart. It's just humans are getting dumber. I really love technology. I like the way it's going. I'm super lazy. Having things go for me and do things for me is fantastic. So let's take a thought. Let's let's go with a hypoth hypothetical scenario here. I get a text message, right? Pull my phone out of my pocket. Currently, I have to hit the button, slide it up, click the thing, or slide it down to see the notifications. Click the one, read it, decide what I want to say, type the button, or hit the dialog box so it pulls up type out or swipe what I need to say hit the send button now imagine how cool it was if I could implant something into me or digest something daily and just pick up my phone a text message goes off I just pick it up it automatically unlocks shoot straight to the text message I read it and then I decide what I want to say I don't even have to push anything it just fills it up for me and then sends it that's pretty, that right there is awesome. Let's say another scenario. You go to the store, right? You have these, you have a chip digested, um, or you have one implanted into you, a more permanent situation. And you go to the store and every line's filled. You get everything you need in your little cart there. And every line's filled. You're like, crap. Now I got to stand in line when I could just go home. Why did I even come here in the first place? So let's get this, right? 
you fill your card up, right? Everything has an RFID tag on it. There's RFID tags on the doors. You fill your card up, you walk out the door, everything registers, it registers to your RFID chip, get your account information, directly bills you, and you just load your stuff up into your car and you're driving home. And by the time you get home, be probably before you even get into your car, your credit card, your debit card is being billed and processed for the goods you just purchased. Tell me how awesome that would be. Okay. Now I'm diving into the part of how cool all this stuff sounds. Now let's talk about the scary part of it. The invasion of privacy. The fraud. And really, let's stop for a second on fraud. That's actually how they're selling this to you right now. Uh, they tell you your identity will be stolen if you slide your card. They can make uh, replica card readers that sit right on top of there. You don't even know. You slide it. You give them your information. With these chips now, you just insert them. It gives a unique ID and no chance of or fraud and theft is taking place. That's exactly how they're going to sell that to you. To make you feel all warm and toasty inside. So you're like, oh man. It's not how it's really, but you get the idea. Okay, so. Invasion of privacy. Privacy. You, you, have you ever seen Minority Report? Dude's just like walking around. It's scanning his retina. That's part of this. That could be part of it. It could be a retina scan. It can be just a scanner that picks up your R RID when you walk through. And when I said a lot earlier, I was talking about digesting a pill. That's something that actually exists. DARPA, or no, she was part of DARPA, but she's working with Google now or something like that. Um, there is no Skynet, guys. It's, it's definitely just Google and Microsoft when the world ends. No Skynet. That, that, those are, that is our Skynet, Google and Microsoft. But anyhow, guys, she had a pill. Uh, tattoos, they follow pills or insert uh, chips and implant them in their bodies. But a tattoo, yeah, they'll love tattoos. Who doesn't love tattoos? Well, turns out the young generation actually is very conservative and they don't like tattoos. So, yes, there are pills. They have been pr uh, pr approved by the FDA. They can just swallow this and, hey, you know, you're good. Makes you wonder if uh, that heart medicine you're taking doesn't have an extra little chip in it to uh, track your heart and Send that back to the, the database. I don't know. Anyhow, guys, this is a very real conspiracy that is unfolding in front of us. Yes, privacy and the invasion of privacy is something to be concerned about. Um, I can't wait till it happens. Oh, technology. It's so, so good. I have something very interesting today that caught my attention. Shout out to Ephesians 6 YouTube channel. I will link the video that inspired this one in the description. So let's jump right in. The term I am seems to be quite powerful and is used more often than any of us even think about. Before researching this, it was the furthest thing from my mind. Just a quick search of I am revealed many things including a movement that believes the phrase has healing power. Most of you should be familiar with the Invictus Games logo that has a yellow I am in the center. It's pretty hard to miss, but we will get back to that. Is anyone familiar with the pop star Will I Am? Well, this is where I got hooked because I've looked into Will I Am in the past and I found that he is admittedly a futurist, meaning that he is big on the development of future technologies. Not to say that this is inherently bad, but when you understand what I am actually means, then it changes your perspective pretty quickly. So what does I am mean? I asked my brother Nicholson 1968, and here's what he had to say. When God revealed his name to Moses, he revealed himself as YHWH, all caps, or Yahweh, which is best translated as I am that I am. Here's the exact verse from Exodus 3.14. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So right there, everything began to make sense, and that's what I want to go over. So thanks to Nicholson for that. Without him, I would still be trying to figure this stuff out. Anyway, now I am means God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Will I Am owns a company called I Am Plus that sells just a couple of technology-based products so far. 
One of them is Bluetooth wireless headphones called Buttons, and they also sell a smartwatch called a Dial. When you go to the About section of I Am Plus, it says this, Founded by innovator and global music artist Will I Am, I Am Plus is a Hollywood-based technology company whose mission is to create technology hits that create a ripple effect across pop culture. Our vision is to create a community of creatives and coders and believe that through music and technology as the first step, we can usher in a powerful new era built on AI. Artificial intelligence, of course. So this is obviously a pro-transhumanism company. Not to mention, H+, is the abbreviation for transhumanism, and there is a magazine called H+, dedicated entirely to transhumanism. So now we are starting to see the connection with Will I Am, his company I Am Plus, and the H+, transhumanism movement. On the surface level, Will I Am seems like a harmless pop artist that makes music for little kids, but it goes much deeper than that. In fact, when you really pay attention to his music videos, you see a lot of transhumanist symbolism. It even shows in his work with the Black Eyed Peas. And this is all conditioning people to accept the transhumanist agenda, especially young children, because that's pretty much the only people that listen to Will I Am and the Black Eyed Peas. Side note, the logo of the new show Westworld looks similar to the Will I Am logo. Not that they were meant to be the same, but being that they are both about transhumanism makes it interesting. Best believe Westworld is playing its role in the agenda. They didn't just turn a 1973 movie into a 2016 television series to be creative. Anyway, let's look at the Invictus Games logo again. I Am, dead smack in the middle. What does it mean? Well, Invictus is a poem from 1888 by William Ernest Henley. Notice his name is William, Will I Am. Maybe a funny coincidence, but maybe not. You never know. So I won't read the entire poem, but the last lines say, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. It sounds very innocent and inspiring, unless you know what it means. It means bypassing God and cheating death. The elite have been trying to find ways to live forever for a long time now, and they are getting close. I am means hijacking God's creation and changing it so it can defy death, which is not natural. We are meant to live and die. It's as simple as that. I hope you're getting the picture, and we do have a little bit more to go over. Let's start with Beyonce and her album, I Am, dot dot dot, Sasha Fierce. At first glance, this doesn't seem to have anything to do with transhumanism, but the reason I kept looking into this is because of the dots. I Am, dot dot dot, Sasha Fierce. The dots tell me that I Am is meant to stick out. So I looked around a little, and sure enough, I found an ad for the Beyonce 2009 I Am tour, with her portrayed as a cyborg. I also found a picture from a performance where she was dressed like the android from the 1927 movie Metropolis. In fact, Metropolis is one of the very first dystopian movies about transhumanism and still shows up in a lot of today's pop music. In the movie, there is an inventor who creates a machine man that he considers to be the man of the future. The android has the ability of taking the form of any person, and the inventor says that no one will be able to tell a machine man from a mortal. It blows my mind that the transhumanist dream was already present back in the 1920s. And today we see Beyonce, Kylie Minogue, Janelle Monet, Christina Aguilera, Lady Gaga, and many more paying homage to the metropolis, whether they are in the know or not. Speaking of Lady Gaga, she got her name from a 1984 song by Queen called Radio Gaga, where the music video is all about the movie Metropolis. There's even part of the video where Freddie Mercury's face is on the android. I just can't believe how deep this all goes. I Am is much bigger than we all think. Let's check out a company called Humai. This company is dedicated to figuring out how to upload people's consciousness into computers in order to live forever. What's interesting is that Humai backwards says I am. You can't make this stuff up. 
One of the people that work there is Kate Aquino. She's listed as a futurist and she's all over the internet under the handle Miss Metaverse, pushing the transhumanist agenda. Her father happens to be Michael Aquino, a satanic high priest and founder of the Temple of Set. But not only that, he was a lieutenant colonel for the United States military at the same time and the military was fully aware. Yes, those are his actual eyebrows. Here's an old newspaper article about Michael Aquino with the title Devil Worshipper Holds Sensitive Army Post and Top Brass Says No Problem. Here he is hanging out with Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan. Alright, so there you have it. This transhumanism agenda is 100% satanic and luciferian, and it doesn't matter if you believe in that kind of stuff. The scary thing is that they do believe it, and they are acting on it. One day, everything in this world that was once natural will be synthetic and without a soul. Again, whether you believe in God or not, they do, and they are knowingly and actively corrupting his creation to the core. At least, that's what they think. Even if you're like me and you can't bring yourself to have faith, this whole agenda affects everybody and truly takes away from the natural beauty of men and women and the world that we live in. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. Please share your thoughts in the comments and let me know if you have any connections to the term I am. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.